Hello everyone, today we are unpacking a critical challenge facing in modern enterprises that is securing AI agents. As tools like Cloud and Cursor become ingrained in our daily workflows, one big question has come to the forefront. How do we safely give these AI assistants access to our most sensitive resources on behalf of the users, that is without compromising security? That's where the model context protocol comes in. MCP offers a standard framework for how AI agents talk to enterprise system, but with that level of access comes to a serious security responsibilities. In this video, we will see what is the difference between the local development and how the enterprise system works with this MCP server and authentication. Let's start by understanding the problem. Many MCP implementations begin with what we call the naive approach and it's where the most people starts with. In this simple model, the AI client runs locally on a user machine and critically the MCP server also runs locally. Authentication? Often now there is nothing at this stage. And for downstream API access, it relies on the hard-coded admin keys and personal access tokens. While this setup works perfectly fine for the local development, it quickly becomes a security nightmare at the enterprise scale. When it comes to the enterprise deployment, it requires the proper authentication of AI client to the MCP server and then the authorization must respect the individual user permission as well as the enterprise policies. Then downstream services access needs to be user scope, not simply admin level access and to everything. For these things, we have a robust solution. It leverages battle tested OAuth patterns, specifically OAuth 2.1 with some modern twist designed for AI agent scenario. There are three different layers are there, user to AI clients, AI clients to MCP server, and then the finally we having that MCP server to the downstream APIs. All we are going to add the security level at the each stage. First, user to AI client. This is a familiar part. The user interacts with their AI agents, whether it's cloud desktop, cursor or other, any other applications. Just as they normally would, the real magic happens behind the scene. AI client to MCP server. This is the first stop. Here is how it works. The AI client redirects the user to the MCP authorization server. The user authenticate themselves, typically via the enterprise single sign-on system, like Okta or Entra ID. The authorization server then issues an access to tokens specifically for the MCP server. The AI client presents this token with its call to the MCP server. Then the MCP server to the downstream happens. This is the second hop. The MCP server receives the user request along with the valid token for any downstream APIs calls to services like Dropbox or Gmail or PostgreSQL. The MCP server uses something called the identity assertion grant. The user's identity token is exchanged for service specific access tokens. Crucially, each downstream call then uses appropriate user scoped permission, ensuring the AI agents only accesses what the specific user is authorized to see. Call then use. Here is a token exchange magic happens like from MCP server to auth server. Here it requests for I have the user ID token. Please give me the Dropbox token for a specific user. For this, auth server to MCP server replaced like here is the user scoped Dropbox token and it's valid for one hour. So when it comes to the token, there are two auth types. One is bearer token, another is a proof of person token. Now the industry is moving toward proof of person token. The reason behind is the traditional bearer token are like a hotel key card. Whoever has it can use it, meaning a stolen token could lead to immediate unauthorized access. With the proof of person token, the security is enhanced. However, a stolen token is useless without cryptographic proof from the legitimate client. This significantly enhances the security. Let me walk through a practical example of implementing MCP auth for an enterprise that wants to connect their AI agents to both Salesforce and Workday through an MCP secure server. In layer 1, configure the MCP authorization server. This server acts as an OAuth 2.0 authorization server with the token exchange capabilities. Next, in layer 2, register for the AI client. The AI client is publicly registered in your MCP auth server. And in layer 3, configure the MCP server. Your MCP server enforces authorization using validates incoming tokens from the AI client. Associate each tool with the downstream identity assertion configuration. And in layer 4, AI client authorization flow will happen here. Here, initiate auth flow, user login is authenticated via SSO authorization server, returns access token, ID token, and reference token. And finally, token exchange happens here. And in layer 5, AI client to MCP server. Here, the MCP server verifies the token and routes as needed. And finally, in layer 6, token exchange and downstream calls happens. That is, authorization server returns a Salesforce specific token scoped for user permission. 
So some of the security concerns in implementation are the token storage, CSR of protection, token expiration, audit login, and the scope limitation. So we need to consider all these on implementing authorization at the AIH level. I am stopping it here guys. Uh, you can access all my codes in my GitHub and it's available in the YouTube description. Let me know in the comments what demo I can show you on air later or any topics. If you like this, please like and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next topic. Until then, bye.